Welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Jacob. Hello, everybody. Boy, we got a doozy for you today. <laughs> How are you doing, man? How are you doing? Oh, we're doing fine. Been raining cats and dogs in the center of the world. <sighs> hmm. Interestingly enough, on my end, it's a bit too warm. I know we're. I, I know I live in a tropical climate country, but the heat is a bit too dry and oh man, it, it's not great. When's the monsoon season coming? Funny enough, I think in the next few months, <laughs> and that's gonna be really wet. Oh well. In that case, you're still good off for the moment. <laughs> for the moment, for the moment. But anywho, uh, in today's discussion podcast, we are going to discuss world building for, well, stories, shows, well, uh, title's going to be world building, yes. But um, in, in this topic, we're just going to talk and discuss about world building st- of shows, games, or whatever it is that uh, kind of percolates in my mind or our minds. So, uh, Jacob, you want to go first, or should I? Well, uh, where to start? Um, the whole basis for the world building is that society evolves and progresses around the environment, or that uh, even their own species, in some cases, in the, which comes with limitations. <coughs> limitations mm-hmm. in world building is what makes us think, and it, it forces us to create to be creative on how to solve problems and in the fantasy setting we can do that we can create fantastic worlds where readers can lose themselves in provided that the world we create has consistency ah yes uh you should treat right that before silver does (laughs) i did several videos ago i just didn't Mm. mention it silver last time But that's true, it's true. I mean, um, one of the few things that world building uh, equates to or pairs up with well is lore. And lore is what your story does and is a continuity from, uh, po- from point A to point B and making sure every little detail matches to whatever has been said. For yeah, example, ba- um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, lore is basically a history book for the story. Yes. Uh, for a good example is uh, Applejack. Why does she have a Stetson on and who gave it to her and so on? In in uh, in reality, we got no freaking idea. But in fan fiction, oh, her pop gave it to her and so on. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I think Applejack is a terrible example. Um, <laughs> who is... Who, who's... Stable. Pinkie Pie, yes, Pinkie Pie. Uh, why does Pinkie Pie have fluffy hair? Because it's her party thing, like she does, or whatever it is. Well, actually, if I recall way back when, the, when the Cutie Mark Crusaders were going about wondering how uh, Rainbow Dash got her Cutie Mark, and then Pinkie mm-hmm. Pie bumped into them hearing the whole discussion, and she explained how she used to work back home on the rock farm, and she'd get... <laughs> those uh, combed down uh, emo hair like the rest of her ha- and her family and then one day the sonic rainbow happened and it uh, <laughs> I don't know how to put it it blew her mind so now she's got puffy hair like that yeah something like that yeah but yes yeah. but um, back, back to uh, world building world building um, for there's a lot of things why you want to uh how do I put this? Um, want to understand or want to kind of appreciate world building is because of the hard work that the writers or whoever uh, is working on the story are doing because it's not easy to... How do I put this? World building is not easy. Uh, it's fun to throw in ideas and whatnot like, oh, uh, I want this to happen, I want that to happen. And, oh, um, maybe this or that. But how do you make things make sense? Uh, for example, the world of uh, MLP G4 uh, is established that uh, Earth Ponies have Earth Pony magic, uh, Unicorn have Unicorn magic, Pegasi has Pegasi magic, and the one to rule them all is the Alcorns and so on. And then at the very beginning, there were one, and then there were two, three, and four, and five. So, uh, 
the world building keeps on going there. Uh, would you agree to me? Uh, sorry, would you agree uh, if world building is the progression of the world and how it evolves from uh, something small to something big? Well, that all depends on where you start. <laughs> Let's be honest for a second. But, True. Uh, the, ML, the world of MLP is really inconsist- inconsistent on how. It's that, that is also yeah. that is also true. Yeah. Um, but still, uh, MLP is one of those things where we we kind of. I mean, everybody here on this podcast and also the audience at home uh, knows a bit more. So uh, I, I just use it as a example. But um, yes, uh, MLP is not really consistent in its world building or storytelling or lore. Yeah. Like for example, uh, you get Canter Lot and Ponyville, which basically looks like it's 19th century Victorian era. Well, mm-hmm. in the other parts of Equestria, like Manhattan, it's a modern day New York with the electricity and everything. Even uh, and even then, rules are broken when you've got vinyl scratch going about in her boombox car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but those 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 are the things where uh, that's I think that has more to do with lore than world building, and with with those introductions, uh, world world building has been established that yes, some places do have electrical power and. Uh, technology are uh, do exist, but we got no idea how everything works. Yeah, well, uh, in some cases, like in the movie, for example, it's explained that electronics are technically powered by magic. Like, do you remember the part where uh, what's her name? Um, Songbird Serenade when she enters the stage. Mm, 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 mm. And her two bodyguards have those uh, microphone on the side, and you can see when their horns lit up and the microphones gl- uh, glows uh, where they mm. communicate. But still, uh, that that I do. Uh, sometimes you have to um, take yourself. Uh, sorry, how do I put this? Um, sus- uh, suspicion of disbelief. Oh, is that suspicion of disbelief? Well, but still, uh, the idea is like, okay, how does this universe work? They're not gonna write down every itsy bitsy detail about oh um this is how it works and here's the diagram for it no 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 it, it's it's just too complicated and my favorite or slash hated word is it's magic it just works <laughs> yeah but then you have to wonder if Manhattan has some sort of power plant where unicorns go to work to power the whole city which you never see. And uh, but, it, it's about it's about the stupid. It's, if you think about it, it's about the stupid, it's the legend of Korra uh, explanation why the city has electricity. Oh, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, it's because the firebenders were uh, adept in electric bending and they kept doing electrics. Is, is that it? Yeah, lightning bending, the power which you, you can only use if you're a level 100 badass. And... Uh, <laughs> In that series, reduced to basically being a power plant worker. But but um, uh, since we're going to talk about Korra, uh, but in that universe, it has been a long time since uh, uh, Avatar: Last Airbender happened. And uh, what was it? Fifty years? A hundred years? No, no, fifty plus years, right? Fifty, sixty, something like that. But it it kind of irritates me because it's just. Uh, too short of a time span to suddenly go from medieval Asian society to basically going to 1920s Hong Kong. I mean, if it was a few hundred years, then it'd be easier to swallow, but it's... After the but, hundred year war passed, it kind of... I don't know. Uh, how should I put it? Um, stagnant? No, not stagnant. Uh, progress? Con- conflict drives progress. Ah, yes. That is also true. That is also true. But I don't know. I mean, uh, when it comes to Korra, they they have an interesting way of doing things, and uh, I do see that. And yeah, they they try to make it how the early uh, how they they make it similar to how um, the early years of Hong Kong were like, and so on. And that that's cool. That is all cool. And I do agree with you where. Oh, some 
people don't really or don't don't really respect the avatar anymore or so on because the avatar is kind of an ancient uh, tradition and so on blah 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 and yeah i can understand why they don't really care for the avatar and so on but the world building is kind of interesting where after so long uh the avatar is kind of obsolete well i wouldn't say that's pretty much the case i say it's more the fact that the story is written so that uh, it's the opposite of uh, Aang? Avatar the Last Airbender, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Basically, Ang was uh, the the best, uh, youngest Airbender in history at the age of what, 11, 12? I think he's the only. Yeah, and he traveled all over the world in order to learn uh, bed- bedding from uh, other people. And, uh, what else? Um, I think there's something else. And then you contrast to Korra, where she was basically at the age of four, she was able to bend uh, three of the four elements already, and then the, they brought people to her home to teach her bending everything else. Mm, yeah. And, yeah, and she was closed off for, from the rest of society for the whole life. And even if, it... uh, even if season three explains that, it's still stupid. But at the same time, too, once you kind of uh, see the universe as it is, they, they they kind of wanted to pamper her, baby her, or uh, control her a bit. But uh, the world, the, the conflict of that universe keep changing each season, introducing new bad guys and so on. So it, the, the, the flow of story is going to be a bit different from what we got from The Last Abender. Uh, I think we reached the point to this. Uh, let's start from uh, good uh, examples of uh, world building, if you shall. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, we got uh, the Eastern King of World Building, which is One Piece, and of course the Western King of World Building, which is Avatar The Last Airbender. And there's some irony in this because uh, Avatar's world is primarily based on East Asian culture, while One Piece is based on everything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything. What? Uh, um, oh, Fujimoto? No. What was his uh, author's name? God dang it. Ichiro Oda. Uh, Oda. Uh, Oda sans can think of. Yeah, but still. <laughs> yeah. Right, so One Piece has the benefit of being based on isolated islands, which is why they don't have to follow a one specific setup, like, for example, in Avatar. It's. Uh, the scenes continuously change. You don't you don't notice it uh, in this blue saga where the heroes are still basically on their home region, but once they enter the Grand Line, things go wild. You go to Winter Island, to Desert Island, Sky Island, to Water Island, etc., and each of the islands is designed uh, so that the function of the society on on it makes sense, like how Sky P. On, in Skypedia, there are different types of clouds, and it's how uh, uh, we see some of the and some of them are used for building material because they're so hard, while others are uh, have so little density that you can basically swim swim in there like water, or like for example how Water Seven, which is based on the Italian city of Venice, has the canals all over the city, and they use some sort of uh, seahorse-like creatures for transportation. And why it's also uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, shipmaker ports uh, in the world. But more importantly, these places are so designed with a larger story in mind. So that when you start connecting the dots, nothing stands out of place and it all makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, with. Yeah, I mean, it feels like different creators or how do I put it it feels like ideology of certain people because um, Oda-san his world is mostly pirates and uh, since it's in, in since the world has nothing to do with our world our universe our lore and logic 
he can kind of make things up as it goes and at the same time to make everything uh how to put this make everything make sense from every little detail and so on <laughs> yeah but it's still uh, well i wouldn't uh, put it all that he's making basically making the toys and go i know that he's done things uh, in advance but Oh yeah, he uh, he has pre-planned everything, but at the same time too, uh, when when you pre-plan everything, there's always room for little edits, little things that oh what, uh like little things pop up for questions. Okay, uh, what what happened here? What what do these people use for transportation? Uh, if they're on land, do they use horseback carriages? Or they use automobiles or so on? And if they do so, how do those automobiles? operate and so on and blah 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 yeah i know you, you put the setting for a sort of a what do you call it a placeholder but then you mm. but then you start see the limitations of the place and how do you work around these things that's true that's true and uh avatar <laughs> uh, avatar is one of those things where it feels like they get the general idea of where their setting is, but because of the setting and how they want to kind of relate it to our universe, they had to do a lot of things to make sense for us. Like what, for example? Uh, automobiles, how do they work? What oh, do they run on and so oh, on? Right, for, for Cora, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah Cora, my bad. But for uh, Avatar, they don't have electricity. Electricity is not a commodity or it has not been discovered yet. So what do they do? They use animals for transportation uh, and so on. Yeah, and they also use bending for anything, anything else. Mm, yes, there, there's that too. Yeah, But Korra, on the other hand, doesn't have that, uh, how do you put this, doesn't have that luxury. Of trying to make things up, uh, even if they do, it feels like they're making things up to a point where it's logical to us, us Earthlings. Yeah, I don't know. I... <sighs> Cora's one of those that you really, I got a real big gripe with that one. Like, hey. there's there's so many things like. Okay, let's talk about the Avatar for a bit. The world's pretty much... The last time was pretty much consistent with the world building for all four nations and the story remains, of course, pretty much without uh, uh, anything... Uh, without what was established bending uh, to the story when it needs. Like... Uh, what is his name? Oh, yeah. As uh, Iro explains. Fire is the element of power. People of the Fire Nation have desire and the will and energy to drive and drive to achieve what they want. Earth is an element of substance. People of Earth Kingdom are diverse and strong. They are persistent and enduring. Air is the element of freedom. The air nomads detach themselves from worldly concerns and found peace and freedom. Water is the element of change. People of Water Tribe are capable of adapting to many things. They make deep sense of commu They have deep sense of community and love uh, that holds them together through everything. That's pretty much everything that uh, sticks together normally throughout the entire series. Mm, sorry, uh, and that makes <laughs> well. That's Avatar Ang. But when it comes to Korra, it feels like all those things are out the window. Yeah, that's the most great thing. One of the things... Uh, hold on. Mm -hmm. uh, let me find it. Ah, one of the problems with the world building, as I mentioned earlier, the whole 1920s Hong Kong uh, setting, I wouldn't be so wouldn't be so much of a problem if it's further uh, further in the future. But those are small potatoes. He, uh, here's one thing that, uh, if you pay attention to the last Airbender, you 
notice this and you quickly realize something is wrong. Like, um, you've got police officers who are all mm -hmm. metal benders and are wearing very metal armor. Now, ask yourself in this case, what would happen if they came across a criminal who was a metal bender? What's stopping him from basically inverting the opponent's armor and crushing them alive? Hmm. Oh, one, yeah, that is also true. That is true. And also, I, I have to think that uh, there will be multiple benders who are there to uh, help just in case that happens. Because how good is this bender that he can control more than one? And bending, sorry, metal bending is some, it's not a old uh, development. It's a recent development that's been around for about, what, 60 plus years, give or take? And the expert Toph, like, she GTFO out of there. Yes, but this is 60 years in the future and metal bending is pretty much widespread. There's an entire, uh, several cities that are based entirely on metal bending. And it's from one yeah, of Stark's daughters. True, and how and the, great or how well can one person be? Like, to the extent of, uh, I am the best metal bender in the world where I can control metal in, like, it, it, it doesn't make sense when I think about it. The more I think about it, the more I'm kind of, Thinking like, what the fuck am I even talking about? <laughs> yeah, and then take into account that all metal benders are police officers. There's, mm, yeah. So there, there's no nobody, no other <laughs> benders in that in that thing. So yeah, that, that, that is also true. That that's that's something not great. Like you need diversity. Yeah, but then again, this, the whole setting has a lot of problems, like the driving conflict. For example, the equalist movement. This is the same problem that we ha that we had noticed uh, when we reviewed the issue ninety six and ninety seven uh, of, of season ten last time. Like mm -hmm. we keep hearing that there's inequality in the city and that non benders are suffering because of it. But much like in the Abyssinia story from last week, we don't really see that happening. We just see one old man protesting with a megaphone. The only time we do see non-betters being suppressed is later down the line the story when the city officials start taking the initiative in rooting out the equalist cells, but that was because the guy in charge was given the approval to do it. So when we keep, get, we keep getting told that benders in the city are being oppressed, uh, are oppressing non-benders, but we're not really shown that. And that's yeah. once again the failure of uh, show don't tell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this is one of those scenarios where uh, for the recent comic we reviewed, that's kind of a comic. And we, we talked at length about how they could have shown it and blah, blah, blah. But yes, for is. anime or cartoons or whatever it is, it's best to show and tell. So you get a general idea of what you're trying to uh, tell your story about. Uh Here's another confusing one. Um, I, I'm not sure if this goes to world building or whatnot, but it, it, it kind of goes for storytelling. But I, I just want your opinion on this. Have you seen the uh, show Morbius? No, but I know it's something about the vampire thing. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so I, I'm not gonna go in depth to it, but it's just that I just know I just know that recently there's been an internet going the meme. It's Mormon time. Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Mm -hmm. But anywho, we're not gonna talk about that one. No, I'm just gonna ask about stuff like okay, you you you, you somehow watch the movie and so on, and this is one of those scenarios where I've heard. A person complain about it but I'm trying to wonder like wait why was it so confusing that you need to watch that scene twice just to get what's going on and the scene is this uh, Morbius is at a cafe or a restaurant or a diner 
and her lady friend comes along. Oh no, sorry, it's the other way around. The, the, the lady friend is sitting at a cafe uh, and Morbius comes in to just talk and chat and the the scene was shown where uh, they were sitting at a nice corner and there was a ray of light coming in, you know, uh, because it's a day and so on, whatever. So the uh, lady offered her a cup of coffee. Sorry, the lady offered Morbius a cup of coffee, yes. Uh, and uh, put it right into frame where it's underneath the light. And Morbius goes to pick it up and says, ah, like he's hurt. And then just giggle uh, and just laughs it off and says, oh, I'm not that kind of empire. So, <laughs> you, you... Yes, are you serious? They're trying to reference Twilight. Well, it, in all honesty, Morbius is not that kind of vampire because he's not there. You know what? That's going in too deep. I'm not going to go because I don't 100% know about Morbius. But anyhow, uh, this scene was portrayed in that sense. And I got it the first time around. And this person didn't get it and had to watch it twice. And me explaining it to you, do you get it? That That's the joke? Yeah, I get the joke. But uh, it, it could be Morbius is not a great movie or not great, not nicely directed or so on. I don't know. Or it's basically <coughs> requiring for a person to actually know what to, what to, what's referencing at all. But at the same time, too, if if you just know about vampires and sorry, a vampire movies, and you know about, or you just pay attention to the movie, you kind of get what's going on yeah so I don't know this, this could be another topic about how to tell the story but anywho counting on to world building and if you don't mind uh, uh, as a dungeon master or game master I tend to tell a lot of quote unquote stories uh, mostly I will be reading from the book and so on but it's the idea of how I interpret it how, sorry, how I interpret the book or interpret the story from the book to the players and tell them what's going on, what's going to happen or what do you see, what do you do and uh, integrate stories from my players background into this world they're in. So to me, Dungeons and Dragons story is very interesting. Uh, I never really played much of Dungeons and Dragons. I do have the, the board at home, but I really don't have anyone like to play it with. It's okay, man. Like uh, it's one of those games that in uh, asks a lot of investments from a lot of people who might not have the time, or uh, yeah, who might not have the time to invest in. Because um, for me personally, in my uh, in my other campaign, uh, it took uh, it takes about four hours a week. No, four hours, one week, just to get everybody in and play. And yeah, uh, my dungeon master is not uh, is awesome at that, and that's great and all. But for how to put this for for me personally, I'm still new at it, and I'm trying to get better. But I, I do see how world building comes into play because. The idea for D&D is you tell a story and you let the player decide how they shape the world. But at the same time too, as the storyteller or as the world builder, you put in scenarios that run parallel to whatever your players are doing. So for example, uh, there's two things that are happening. Uh, let's just say one place the players need to go uh, to investigate or a they just need to go to a bar or whatever it is. If the player says, oh, they need to go to the place they need to investigate, the bar will still go on and things might happen that the players won't know or notice. And maybe it's a small change to the universe or maybe it's just something that's not really... 
uh, important. But if they ask, it might change their perspective on how they look at the scene or at the world and so on. And that's where uh, Silver's favorite catchphrase comes in. Continuity ha happens where, <laughs> oh yes, this happened while you were gone and so on. Oh yeah. Uh, you also have to uh, take into account since you're, uh, you're the one building this uh, story, you have to uh, take into account uh, things that you normally wouldn't expect other people to do, for example, like that, going that completely off the beaten path. That, that is also true, and you need to think fast on your feet because, <laughs> uh, how do I put this? There, there's a few ways to handle that. There, there's, a, there, there's one way where you just let chaos reign and you just see where it goes and what the player asks of you. Or you railroad them back to the track that you want them to go. In, personally, for me, I don't like doing that. And one of the first campaigns that I hosted was kind of a mystery campaign where I needed them to go to this specific location because if not, the story will not move. <laughs> yeah. I get that. I know that feeling. And it's not that I want to, it's just what is written in the book. I don't have flexibility in this one. <laughs> if it's just a yeah. basic, I go here, smash stuff, then yeah, I can let you guys do whatever you want. I mean, it's simple enough, right? It's just simple yeah. enough. You just go smash face, then come back, get reward. But if it's a mystery... Oh no, you need to go to this location, do a bit of investigating, and make sure you hit the difficulty check or not you don't know shit <laughs> that's why I could never be uh, good at building a story for uh, Dungeons and Dragons I'm not good at uh, thinking uh, uh, <laughs> I think the phrase is uh, what is um, mm, my goodness it's what Silver does when he plays uh, whose line is it anyway improv yes improv Oh yeah, I'm not good at improvising on the spot. <laughs> but sometimes it's fun. Like it is fun when you manage to do something that is unplanned and it works, and somehow it carries the story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> those, those little details are fun. <laughs> those little details are fun. I, I think back in the days uh, when there was an S blog or S Tumblr, uh, was it S blog? S blog, right? A S K S blog. I don't remember. I've been off Tumblr for like almost a decade now. Yeah, same here. But no, um, uh, back in the days, in the pony days, there were uh, websites or whatever it is that there were Ask Pony or Ask Something blogs. Yeah. And those were fun because it lets the artist kind of let the audience dictate how things go and the artist just um, how do we? The artist just uh, replies to the comment via comic. Oh, I I know what you mean. Uh, there's one of those uh, requests you daily every now and then. Um, I forgot what what's her name again. The one with uh, uh, films for me. Oh man, I think what? Uh, oh man, it's not. I I know James. James, yeah, but. Ask. Uh, I forgot the OC name. Sorry, my my, my bad. Ask movie slate. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So th those those were one of those things, and I think he's still going. So that's that's awesome on him. Uh, okay. But yeah, um, those those are those examples of how world building works in that sense too where the audience is the one dictating how it should go. Ah, uh, okay. That's nice. Yeah. And yeah. as the artist or composer or the writer, you just follow through and add in whatever you need to add to make things to make sense. Okay, right. <laughs> Hold on a second. 
All right. I'm trying to think of something. Um, there's one series that I think the world building is just crap shoot, a crap shoot of things that kind of confuses, confusing, and I think that world is Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. But uh, like what, for example? <sighs> one of the f- one of the biggest. Um, what you call this? One one of the biggest um, thing is the main protagonist, Age Ash. Oh he's yeah, still, that one. It's been he's, twenty years and he's still eleven years old. For fuck's sake! I thought he was ten. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that that's oof, that that is a major flaw in terms of. In terms of story, so yeah, that's. They could have. It's been so long that they could try doing a new protagonist every so generation, just like you do or did it. Oh, yeah, true. But then again, if that was the case, I wouldn't set up my world building so that everything revolves around duos like it happened in Zaxo. <laughs> But but at the same time too, right? When, when when you really look at how Westerners does their story, or even uh, Asian artists or mangas do their story, I, I do notice that some of the shonen uh, shows, uh, example, uh, Dragon Ball, for example, does their show where okay, we take arcs, we just use um, the Saiyan arc as a starting and jumping off point and then we move on to the and uh frieza and so on blah 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 and then once everything's done they don't even try to reboot it they carry on with goku and his adventure in super but when you take a look see at western stories they they do I, I, honestly i am not too invested so i don't really know their ins and outs but from what i do understand is that they like to do a restart or a reboot in their universe where things are new. Peter Parker is a kid again. Or Peter Parker needs to go to high school and blah blah blah. Yeah, the superhero genre is the biggest offender in this case. I mean, like, take again. Yeah. Like, I don't know how many times we've gone through the same scenario all over again. And considering the the comic genre ways goes way back before nineteen forties, and then we got, for example, Captain America, which is uh, set in the Second World War, and mm-hmm. then in the original he's frozen for like only a few years until the end of the war, and now we got the part with the Avengers where it's like seventy years later. Uh, yeah. Uh, Although in that in this case it works better because you put uh, somebody who's completely out of touch with the new time in a completely different setting. That, that but is everything true. else, uh, it's so annoying. Watching reboots the happening uh, like every five or ten years, it's yeah, it's yeah. annoying and. And then there's the modern uh, reboots where they basically decide to just either gender bend or race bend the existing character. Like, that's gonna make things more interesting instead of making new characters. That, that is true. Yeah, I, I do understand that. But I I do like the gender bend thing. It makes, it makes things interesting, but I don't like how... They just say, okay, this is a new reboot, so let's just reboot things and change stuff around. Yeah, but what about the previous canon? What about the previous thing? Doesn't that count? That you, you built that world really good. But, oh no, since it's new, we have to start fresh, but not really because certain things carry over. What? Yeah. But then again, we're back in the Avatar at this point again. <sighs> Um, Avatar is Korra is interesting I'll have to say Korra is interesting the way that they build that world 
in terms of how people entertain themselves, how they go to work or have fun, eat and whatnot. That is interesting. I, I do like that. And how the bending league, that's a thing and that's kind of popular. Yeah, that, that's fun. That's cool. And how they set up the rules for it and so on. That is fun, cool, yay. That's that's really okay. I, I like that. I, I like that small touch where you don't really need to explain things, but you do. You do it just yeah, because but, you like it. Yeah, but in case of the bending tournament or whatever, it looks like the writers are trying to make a comparison between Harry Potter's Quidditch in uh, Avatar's world, but the difference is that at least you understand the rules uh, of Quidditch because uh, they explain that they're simple enough. But you don't know how rules work in the Avatar world because it's not really defined properly. I have to stop you there because I kind of get how um, that sport works. And you can even play it in the Legend of Korra game that is on Steam. So I I oh, kind of I, I kind of understand how it works. So it's like, mm. <laughs> yeah, but did you learn that from the video game or from the series? The game. Well, then it doesn't really matter in that case because so, two completely uh, different medias. But but that's the thing. I, I mean, uh, when when you come back to ponies, uh, for example, this is this is where things get a lot confusing because, okay, season 9 ended, yay, whatever, and then we continue to season 10 in the comics. So now, um, what does the comic take from, sorry, what does the comic carry over from uh, the TV show and from its own canon? Well, here's the thing. Uh, General Whitley already had a perfect setup for the end for the end villain, even though if uh, the whole uh, IDW thing that we were discussing the, uh, last time, even if that did happen, he had a perfect setup for uh, a villain for uh, for this one and everything else he could have done. He uh, he said uh, he said it himself way back in Legends of Magic, the first issue. And, we you also still have some things left that are left unanswered from uh, the end of season nine. Like, uh, I'm not, hold on, I'm trying right. to find it now. Take a time. Yeah. Um, but still, um, w oh man, we're, we're, world building is how to put this. It's it's not, difficult. Yes, but it's rewarding. Yeah. Oh, yes, that, that is true. I, I would have gone for world building is not easy, but it's fun. <laughs> right, so one of the things that you notice throughout the series is that uh, ponies all have uh, this one constant enemy that's prevalent throughout the entire, uh, the entire uh, Equestria. And it seems like that nature itself is trying to hurt them. Like, mm -hmm. you've got the wind echoes who are the winter spirits, you've got the uh, storms of the frozen north that are only kept at bay from, by the crystal heart from the crystal empire, and of course, uh, prime suspect number one, the ever free forest. Mm -hmm. Without the elements of harmony keeping it at bay, it starts to spread uncontrollably. And this is basically the basis for which I uh, wrote uh, my uh, story uh, of Lemon of the mm. villain, That's the villain. For, for your story? Yes. Ah, alright. <laughs> all right. Uh, but... I don't know if I should... Yeah. What, what yeah, was what? it? <laughs> no, you, uh, you tell. All right, but um, th th how to put it? It's like that. That's the thing with uh, Jeremy Whitley's thing, because does the comic still goes into canon? So that's that's the that's the that's the question that I have. Because 
if this is season I'll, I'll, 10... I'll... <laughs> hmm? No, 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 finish it. Sorry, if this is season 10, that means, uh, logically speaking, everything that is in the books are non-canon anymore. Like, past, uh, past whatever uh, season 10, episode 1, uh, it has to relate to the series, not the comic series that they have. But since this is the comic and they start at number... 80 something whatever it is 90 something I, I don't remember so 89. it says that it's continu- uh, continuing from the previous things so right now we have a cross pollination of worlds of what so okay um remember how certain characters or certain story beats in the uh, in the comics are non-canon to whatever it was in the show. Yeah. And uh, once that comes in, it overrides the comic thing. So now, yeah. carrying forward, are they going to still keep the, what you call this, comic canon or just throw that away for the show canon? Uh, well, we're still... Uh several months away at this rate before we finally get to issues uh, 101 and 102 so uh, we might gonna have to save that uh, discussion for them but somehow I have a feeling it's not gonna be related in any way unless somebody has the bright idea to take the final beat from uh, the final issue but I hope not (laughs) oh well we'll just have to wait and see because there is a lot of things to go through. Yeah. <coughs> All righty then. So, uh, Jacob, anything more to add? Uh, well, there is one thing uh, a lot on the topic of bad world building. Uh, let's let's discuss Chip and Dale movie for uh, for a moment. <laughs> oh God. So you watch it? Well, not exactly watch it, but I did see how the story progresses, and I got several pro- problems with this, and one of them is also what I said uh, last time uh, about it when you mentioned it. Ah, uh, yes. In all honesty, oh, man, I'm trying to think of what were they doing, how were they doing it, and how does it make sense, and is. Mm, uh, mm, you know, I I just find it hard. Th- that's all. I, I just find it hard. <laughs> but anywho, what do you have? Well, uh, let's go back to the whole thing that caused the the whole conflict in the movie. Basically, well, just like I said, said last time, the Peter Pan uh, is the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the story beats seem to go exactly the way, like how the Disney child star, I forget what his name is again, uh, who, who was a big thing way back when he was still a kid, and when he g- got older, he voiced the original Peter Pan in the movie. But then puberty hit him real hard, his voice started to change, he got acne, and... From what I understand, when he went to work, the the guys outside the studios basically just didn't want to let him in, saying that he's being cut off from the Disney altogether. He's no longer employed because he was no longer fitting for anything. Just like that. Mm-hmm. And that whole thing spiraled to the point where he started doing drugs, and at the age of like 30... 30 something he ended up dying nameless tossed in the in the grave uh, without naming it was only a year later when they discovered that he had gone missing i mean that he was dead but they couldn't find where he was buried because apparently the records were burned so even to this day nobody knows where the original voice actor of peter pan is buried ah wow that that sucks a lot ouch yeah which is why it feels like the 
people doing this movie did this on purpose out of spite. But uh, apart from that, from what I understand, the whole uh, criminal thing that Peter Pan does in that movie is that he's using some kind of animation surgery to put it in some way where he basically turns all uh, cartoon characters into bootleg versions of themselves and then sends them away. Yeah, something like that. I mean, that that's his gimmick, yes. Right. So, he's a fat uh, old man, uh, fat uh, middle-aged man, but for some reason... You see that one kid from the Neverland who's still exactly the same age as he was way back in the movie. So why did Peter Pan age? From from a me- me- messaging with um, one of the patrons, myself, like he told me that I'm not hundred percent sure how legit this story is. Uh, so I might be wrong, but uh, he told me that they changed the. story story uh the villain of the story was supposed to be pluto what uh i i i it's it's kind of um I, i'm not 100% remembering how the full story goes but um pluto was the main villain he wanted to be the best animated character and start doing all those things to steal best parts from other characters. Yes. And in in the movie, I'm not 100% sure if you watched it, uh, Chip's ears were floppy. Like, in, in the movie, they call it Snoopy ears. But if you think about it, in a sense, it looks like Pluto's ears. <laughs> so, sorry? I don't remember that. Yeah, so it's it's one of those things where I'm not hundred percent sure how legit this is, but it does make sense, and that's why the lost child and Peter scene was kind of a throwaway. Uh, they weren't really supposed; it wasn't really supposed to be there, kind of thing. Eh. That's what I heard. I'm not hundred percent sure if it's true or not, because this movie was kind of made and done when COVID hit. So, yeah. A lot of things could have happened. Yeah, I suppose. But then again, the whole... There's still, there's still the whole problem why this one... Uh, that one kid from uh, Peter Pan will look still exactly the same while Peter Pan himself aged up. <sighs> that, that I don't know. That I don't know. Yeah, there's one break in uh, world building. And the other one is, well, Peter Pan, who's a bad guy now, is running this uh, cartoon surgery where he basically can change uh, cartoons in whatever he wants. So, what's exactly stopping him from doing it on himself and making himself look better so they'll take him back again. I know, right? That's the, that's one of those questions where I was thinking when watching the machine work, like, wait, why did he do it on himself? Huh. Yeah. There's another thing about world building that really makes no sense. Uh, true. But still, but still. Uh, um... Uh, uh, yeah, Chip and Dale is another movie that's so... Uh, my brain hurts just watching it. And it's not bad. It's not It's not a bad movie. It's a really entertaining movie. But my head hurts because it, it's thinking like, wait, how did they get the rights for that character? How did they get the rights for that character? Why are the ponies there? Yeah, I saw. Uh, the... What are they called? The the lawyers must have been working real hard on that one. But I'm just thinking... get all the copyright. But I'm just thinking, why are the ponies there? Why are they there? Well, what happened? And Why why is Sora hair there? Sora, yeah. <laughs> ah, the, ah, that that one. That, mm, you know what? That, I, I, don't, I don't want to care anymore about Kingdom Hearts. Ah... Uh. Kingdom Heart hurts my brain. 
it's got like what the ten sequels. <laughs> mm. But anyway, that's in between the <laughs> two and three. <laughs> <laughs> that is also true, and don't forget the prequels. <sighs> oh god, no! I only ever played two, and I never could get past Xandus. You know, I oh, I played Kingdom Hearts one on the original console way back when 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 I, when I was a young lad, and then. Uh, waiting for Kingdom Hearts 2, I heard that, oh, Chain of Memories arrived on the GBA. And then I was like, oh man, I want to play this, why I don't have a GBA? Years later, <laughs> oh, emulators, they rule! Play it, and like, I got no idea what I'm playing, but it's Kingdom Hearts! Yeah! And then Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, like, yeah! <laughs> and, and like, um, years later, Kingdom Hearts Kingdom Hearts came out in 2020, right? Uh, three, um, 2020, I, I found it again. So. Yeah, so it was like, so. yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3. Didn't even bought it, didn't even talk about it, didn't even play it. And yeah. the reason why is just because the in-betweens. There's the DS game, the Vita game, the mobile game, the whatever game is in-between. So it's like, you know what? I'm not going to really touch it. And you wonder why Star Wars has gone down the crapper since the sequel, since Disney series. Oh god, talking about Star Wars, there's another world building down the drain. Oh, don't get me started, especially with The Last Jedi, I swear. You know <sighs> you know what? No, I, I'm not going to even talk about The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi is its own thing. Just think about it. Like, Star Wars came out like the last one came out in what uh, 80 somethings blah 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 so on and then like there's a huge gap before episode 1 came through or came out yeah. so there were a lot of um, extended universe stuff where they were the books and so on and those were awesome yeah I also got the games yeah the, the games too like um, in, in, in one of the books uh, they were talking about uh, Han Solo's kid with Leia and I'm not talking about Kylo I'm talking about the, the other two like they were trained to be Jedi and so on and that was really cool or um, uh, who now uh, the general the blue the blue general guy General Tron 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 I, I don't know how you say it yeah he was in the he was in the novels and they did him really good. And in the Disney canon, they brought him back for Rebels. Yeah, I saw it. And they off him like a bitch. By space whales. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where you have a very good asset here. Why are you wasting it on, I'm not saying that Rebel is bad. Rebel is a serviceable show, which is very interesting and very entertaining. But General Ton, he is pure gold. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. And then you get so many, like, especially... With the recent thing that came out now, the Obi Wan series, is like, why, why even? You know, the... why are you trying to discredit an established character just so you can try to push some BS on us? Ah, you know what? I, that that I can see much because at the same time too, a lot of people are 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 asking what happened in between then and there, like what what did he do and so on, and if you're a storyteller you want to tell the story and that's how fan fiction works <laughs> and there yes, are some this, we live in a day of it in the day and age where everything is fan fiction well no i wouldn't even call it fan fiction because an actual fan would have to work on that fiction it's more like faux fiction because people who hate star wars work on that fiction i i wouldn't say that i mean i haven't watched him i i haven't watched ben so I don't have any right to say how if it's good or not, but I mean it's it's a concept where 
they want to tell a story and I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. Like they 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 feel like they have the guts to do something with that. So, yeah, for me personally, I just want to see where they go with it. Yeah, I get the idea, but then you also have to uh no, the fact that some people don't do it because I got a good, interesting story to tell, but more because they got more uh, insidious plans behind them. Oh, yeah, I mean, but still, when it comes to capitalism, uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to capitalism, they they always want to try and milk a cow and so on, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it's one of those things where if people want it, then yay, more, more power to them because my nephew are really into Star Wars and they're six and uh, five, five or six and seven. So yeah, they're, they're really into it. They really enjoy the show. So it's one of those things where I say, if you don't like it, maybe it's not for us. Yeah, I know. But then why were you the fan of this thing in the first place? Unless somebody on the outside decided to change it for some some to something else, uh, that, that, that's the part where I I don't like what Disney did. No, it's a smart move, but I don't like it. Where uh, everything from the EU is non-canon, so they only pick and they they'll just pick and choose which one they want. So it's 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 one of those things where I understand why I don't like it. Yes, but then you got that idiot go first they toss the entire expanded universe out the window and then they say they got no uh, story references or resources <laughs> to pull uh, source material for, but, for new stores. Uh, but that's the thing. Like when you discredit or when you non canonize things that are already established and here's the thing, I, I, I do get it I, I do get why. I, I do understand why. It's just it is is to put in a clean slate or a fresh start for uh going forward it makes to is to quote unquote make things easy so it doesn't clash with whatever has been written down or so on yes i do understand that that is as part of world building that is what sometimes is needed but yeah. if you discredit every good work that has been but it's one of those things where if they pick and choose, but no, that's what they're doing too. Oh, God. Yeah, and, and then they just repeat the story that was already told, but slightly different. Just and like was... how season 10 is. Yes. And just like how G5 is viewed by those who are still uh, shackled to G4. You know, I watched season G season 5 all of the whatever YouTube is there, and it's okay. It's not, oh man, it's it's not earth shattering like how G four was. It's it was okay, and the recent movie that came out on Netflix, it was okay. <sighs> but still. When you got so many things in the world building that's tossed out the window, then you just... I don't know how to put it there, but if you were from the position like... If you were a Star Wars fan and then you watched... Uh, what's it called? Uh, the, in the first movie of the Disney. Um, the Force Awakens? Yeah, if you watch Force Awakens, then you're just gonna... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, face palm because you're just watching the same thing all over again, but it's not that good. I know it's, I know that it's the uh, G5, the first movie, is not that bad, but still, when the things they did with the world building, like when you start putting so many references in the background and you start asking questions. But I, I, I had this conversation with Silver on the G5 um, first movie that we talk about. Uh, go listen there to hear what we think about it. But 
for me personally, I do understand why it's a it's a hook, and it's just to say that yo guys at home, uh, the G four is canon to this universe. Oh, wouldn't you want to know what happened? Ah, now stay tuned to see what happened. Ah, which is cool, which is very interesting. I like the concept, but the way that it's being told that is what I don't like. They're they're drip feeding us things. They're 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 not really giving us what we want at a steady pace. It's. How how do I even put this? Even the YouTube five minute shows that they have, it's not telling us anything. And uh, the recent movie that came out brings up a lot more questions rather than answers. The biggest one is no, dragons. Think... What the hell? Yeah, and who the hell's that uh, Alaco- no name Alacor if they are seen before? That is also true. <laughs> who? Personally, I think. I think G five would have had a better uh, reputation if it if it didn't if it wasn't stated that it was the continuation of G four or if it was at least in an alternate reality of G four at least then people would but, have but, but, time swallowing it. I do agree with that, but here's the thing: we are not told that this is the alternate universe for G four. What we're told that it has something to do with G four, but we're not told that this is an alternate timeline. So, we got no idea! It could be! I mean, if so, yay! Multiverse of Madness! No, please, no more multiverses. Okay, I've enough with Marvel already. Uh. Oh, but still, it would be very interesting if, it's, if that was the case. But, well, we do have a multiverse in the the other comic series that came uh, at the end, but that's still uh, far off before we uh, start reviewing that one. Oh my god! I just... Generations. I just have to wait. I just have to wait. But anywho, anywho, um, is there anything more? Well, I was gonna discuss the whole world being that I had set up for uh, for the universe, but. Considering uh, if we're planning to continue uh, the world uh, discussion for our next time, if Silver comes by, I think it's better that you save it for then. Yeah, I, I feel that way because here's the thing uh, for the folks at home who got no idea, Silver has a DeviantArt page. Yay, obviously, if you know, yes. But he also has his comic that he writes on occasion when he's free and available to do it. And uh, it has something to do with his character. Third, um, do, do, do you remember <laughs> his character's name? I, uh, uh, I, I do remember that uh, Blue Pony, but uh, I forgot what his name was. I, I only saw the video once. Yeah, oh my god. Okay, 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 give me a second to look for it. Uh, fill up space for the audience at home while I look for Silver's thing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, DeviantArt looks so different. Oh my goodness. Well, was the last time you were on? I mean, I, 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 I haven't been on my front page for a while now. Like, the front page is something new for me. Like, um, what is this? This is strange. I don't like change. I don't like uh, change. <laughs> Oh my goodness, where is Silver? I can't find him here. Load more. Okay. Oh god damn it. You want me to load more? Oh my goodness, I really need to clean this up. Like, I have probably people that are not posting anymore. Oh my goodness. Where where are you, Silver? Why is it hard? <laughs> uh, people then say, why don't you save Silver's thing? Oh goodness me. You know what? That, that is also true. Maybe... maybe it's easier for me to find it on EQD. Yay. Oh, goodness me. Um, Give me a second. I, I'm sure I can find it. Yes, yes. Um, Clap? No, it's not Clap Trap. Trap. trap, trap. What was his name? Goodness me. But anywho, yeah. Um, Silver has a DeviantArt page. Go to his DeviantArt page to find it and um, go watch his comic. He, he builds comic there and Packadums are a thing. 
and we'll be sealer work will. That's his uh, thing. Yes. MLP dash silver dash quill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see if I can find the character's name. Goodness me. Uh, na 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 na. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, clutter step. Yes, there we go. Clutter step. He he builds his own universe there. It's really cool. Uh, what else can I say? The the story is very fascinating, and you guys should go check it out. Yeah, it's on dvnart.com slash mlp dash silver dash quill yay that, that's where you can find him yay ooh <clears throat> but anywho anywho uh, let's save whatever we have for the future when silver comes about and we can progress the conversation and so on but anywho let's wrap it up so, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themediagmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the Media Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Jacob, where can the good people find you? People can find me on the DeviantArt page, Jaka von Tolkar, on Twitter page, uh, Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested uh, in, in reading, uh, read, uh, reading the fan fiction that I'm writing, you writing you can find me on uh, mm. .com. the the name is Termo Rising mm. and if uh, you're interested in a comic that isn't about ponies and it features anthropomorphic talking animals uh, set in a fantasy medieval setting you can visit talesoftheashes.com awesome awesome and yeah guys at home like uh, medieval setting is fun when you put in anthropomorphic characters, that's a that's going to be really fun too. And I'm just wondering how would that work work in D and D? That's going to be fun too. <laughs> uh, I was actually thinking for a long time how to build my own version of D and D for my universe, but uh, that's still a bit far off. Uh, I mean, honestly speaking, um. Races are one thing, but the classes you can just import it from D and D and make it work. Uh, it's just well, yeah, that's easy. Hmm? Sorry? Yeah, the classes are the easy part. It's the races that uh, what kind of bonuses or deficiencies. Well, they have. That's te technically, uh, honestly speaking, technically you can just copy paste or pull from whatever uh, Fifth Ed has when it comes to certain things. Uh, humans or your basic. Creatures have certain bonus. You know what? We we can talk about it later on. <laughs> yeah, we've already went past the time. Yes. Anyway, also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyvibe.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash NBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm Jacob, and stay consistent. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the VS Show. See ya! Bye-bye!